Hey everyone, I wanted to show you how to make a variable font in Glyphs. I know that's not the primary program we're using, but it seems to be the most linear, and I'm sure most of it will transfer to RoboFont, but I figured I would start there since it seems to be the easiest and what many of you have decided to use. So in today's video, I'll show you how to go from this to this uh, with Glyphs. And just to preface this, I'll say a couple of things. One, this is going to be kind of a clunky video because this isn't um, something that's intuitive to me. This is only about the third time I've done it. So get ready for a lot of misclicks and things like that. The other thing is that y'all really, really would do well to watch or read all the documentation relative to Glyphs and, uh, for that matter, RoboFont, if that's what you want to stick with. Uh, this video is rapid fire, but super dense in the amount of information it'll give you on how best to draw paths and stuff. We're just going to use some fairly simple ones for today's demo so I can cover the more pragmatic details without getting bogged down in letter form nuance. But um, this is going to be really helpful, as are a lot of these tutorials. So give this a look. It's glyphsapp.com forward slash get dash started. Uh, okay, so the first thing we're going to do is open up a new file in Glyphs, and I will just click on the I panel. Here we go, and then I'm also going to open up the information panel, and I'll give this a name. We'll call this um, variable test uh, one, just to keep it all set. And to start with, I'm going to go over to master and I'm going to name this. In this instance I'm going to name it thin and give it a weight of 100. Uh, and then I'm going to create a new master and actually again we'll just misclick number one. We'll say thin and I'll hit enter so it changes. And then uh, for this one I'm going to call it heavy because we want to be working in the extremes for interpolation. So I'll give this a font weight of 900, which this is all kind of relative to, if I understand right, um, the stem width. And in our case, it's not going to correlate exactly, but it'll be close enough for this demo. The other thing you can do that you don't, um, you don't have to, but if you want to keep track, especially if you're going to have several masters, and in some instances you will, is to pick a visual representation so that you can click between them easily. I'll show you where this shows up. In fact, it'll show up right here. So we'll select that one. See how that changes over there. And then for heavy, I'm going to select, obviously, the very heavy version. This is heavy extended, but since we're not doing an extended case, um, we'll just stick with that. The other thing I need to come down here is add a to add a custom parameter. And so in this new parameter, I'm going to type axes. And then when I click a value, it's going to give me this. Now, if I'm just trying to add, say, like weight to my particular uh, font, I can select from the predefined with variable fonts there are width and italic and optical size and slant. And those are predefined and they have lowercase four, uh, four character. Uh, abbreviations, and that's important relative to open type, particularly when you transfer things onto the web. Uh, the lowercase uh, denotes a predefined, um, predefined uh, abbreviation and correlates to the axis name that's already, again, been kind of predefined. However, you can, uh, if you want to create a custom one, like in the uh, previous class example, I had wavy. Uh, if you, it's convenient that this is four, uh, four characters, but if you're making a custom axis and you want to make sure that you don't bump into any of the predefined ones, you want to make it capitalized. There's no chance in the future that the consortium will use uppercase. They'll only use lowercase. So by capitalizing your four character abbreviation. You're going to avoid any potential future conflicts if you deploy this to the web. So in our case, I'm actually going to just stick with weight and 
we're going to click OK, but you can make a custom one. I think some of the ones we reviewed in class were ones like chew and bite. Uh, probably no coincidence that those are also four digit or four character uh, names, but whatever. That's kind of aside from the point. So we'll click OK, and that will give us our um, custom axes. Um, and then we can begin. We can also set up predefined instances. So if I were so inclined, and we'll do this just for the sake of, we can click add instance for each master and it will, uh, these will be predefined weights due to our interpolation, even though the user will ultimately have the ability to say, um, fine tune that infinitely. So we're gonna go weight thin and I'll correlate this to those. And in this case, we'll say heavy and we'll call that a heavy weight. This is what will show up in your, um, like in your typesetting program, for instance. And we'll add one more in the middle. We'll make this a regular, and this will be a regular weight, and we'll call that good. And now we should be 